The Romans invaded Britain in the year 43 AD and they stayed until 410. The Romans brought with them lots of new ideas and the buildings they made would have looked very different to anything that had come before in the land of the Fans. New roads meant that people found it easier to move around and it also allowed things which had been made far away to be brought to Britain. One of the many changes to life in the land of the fans was the kind of pottery that people used. There were lots of different reasons for these changes, uh, which include fashion, new ways of using pottery, and where the pottery was made in the first place. Archaeologists have found evidence for people making pottery around Romford, Thurrock and Greys. This included the remains of things called kilns. These were a special kind of oven where the clay, pottery, is heated to a very high temperature, which makes it hard enough to use. The kilns found around Thurrock were mostly round in shape with a dome top. They were made from clay and some of them were built in shallow pits. Air flowed into the kiln through a small tunnel called a flue. Different uses of the pottery meant that different shapes of the pottery could sometimes give archaeologists a clue to what they were used for. For example, this is a piece of something called a motarium. If you look carefully, you can see that the inside surface has been made rough with lots of small stones pushed into it. Food would be crushed against this surface to turn it into a paste. Many people still use these today, and if you look around your own kitchen later, you might find one. Some Roman pottery, like this, had fancy decoration. This was made using moulds that the clay was pushed into, which meant that the designs could be repeated on more than one pot. Other pottery was plainer, like this. Also, if you look carefully, you can see that there is something in the clay. This isn't here for decoration. Instead, it is crushed up shell, which has been added to the clay to make it stronger. Some of the pottery was made locally, but others had traveled long distances. They could be used to carry other products like this one, which would have held wine or, or oil or something. And some of them had value of their own, like the same in where we showed you earlier. Now, it's time for us to do a craft activity and we're going to make something uh, called salt dough and we're going to make our own pottery. Now, salt dough is uh, very different to the clay that the Romans used and we're going to use it because your oven does not get hot enough to make clay pottery. Um, the kilns would have got up to something called 2000 degrees centigrade is four times hotter than your oven at home can get. So this is a good substitute for being able to do this yourselves. Watch the video, all the instructions are in there. Play it as many times as you need to. Take your time and if you do make anything please feel free to share the pictures with us. We'd love to see what you've made. Um, you can get us on all the social media channels for uh, Land of the Fans and for Mola and you can also get us through our website. Um, thank you very much and um, enjoy yourselves and I'll see you around. Bye-bye. You will need 500 grams of plain flour, like this. Then you will also need 250 grams of table salt. Here we go. There it is. And finally, you'll need 125 grams millilitres of normal water. Doesn't have to be hot, doesn't have to be cold, just water. There you are. Brilliant. So, you will also need a few other things, like a big mixing bowl, like this one. There you are. There it is. And a spatula or a spoon. I've got a nice latex one, which is really good for scraping the bottom of the bowl. So, pour all of the ingredients into the mixing bowl. Tap it nice and Hard to make sure none of it's hiding. Hiding. And there we go. Oop, there's still some of it managed to escape. And put the salt in as well. Pour all that out. Give it a good shake. 
Uh, yep, tap, 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 shake, 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 all of it in there. And then finally add in the water to help start turning it into a dough. So pouring all the water in there, that's it. Right, lovely stuff. Now take the spatula or spoon or whatever you want to do and start mixing it together. Now obviously um, the Romans wouldn't use flour and salt for their pottery. Uh, they would use clay that's been dug out of the ground or near rivers or things like that. Um, but it's a little harder to make that kind of pottery at home because you need uh, the kilns that we talked about earlier to get really, really hot to be able to make the clay go hard. But if we take things like this, which is basically a kind of a bread, um, we can bake these in your normal ovens at home and it will turn into a nice hard surface for you to be able to work on. So just keep mixing, 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 mixy, mixy, mix, 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 mix. This is the mixing song. Um, you can come up with your own song if you like. Uh, mixy, mix, mixy. It's not a great song. Um, but you just keep mixing it until you have a nice smooth dough that we're working with. So yeah, keep turning it over and over and over. Um, this is a good point to uh, have the adult that you're working with help you. Uh, leave them do the hard work maybe and uh, or it's no, it's fun to get stuck in yourself as well whatever works for you so we mix the dough around again and start thinking about what kind of decoration you might want to put on this uh, you can use paint or you can use um, stickers or um, crayons work really well but also oh, there we go Add a little bit of flour as well if it's if it's a little bit too soft because as you can see it's too soft at the moment to make a really good dough. So you keep adding little bits of flour to make sure that it comes together into a much tougher uh, dough so you can actually mould it into the shape. And that's what I'm saying. Think about the shape you want to do as well. Um, remember the kinds of pottery we've already seen like the red one which is the Samian ware. Um, do you think you could make some of the shapes that you've seen, like maybe decorating things with your thumbs? All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the dough out onto a well-floured surface. You put the flour on it to make sure that the dough doesn't stick. And here we go. And you can see it's still a very gloopy, sticky dough. So we're going to have to add some more flour to that to make sure that it stiffens and, and it hardens up so that we can start moulding with it. We can actually turn it into the shape of a pot. There you go. See, it's just a little bit too soft. But what you do is you just move it around. This is called kneading. And you squash it and you just add more bits of flour like that until you start to get a harder, stiffer mix. There you go. Lots and lots and lots and lots of squeezing later. And you have a ball of dough a little bit like this. So we're going to use three different ways that you can uh, make them. The first one is going to be coil made. So you've got to get out these sort of long worms, squidge them out and roll them out and then start rolling them round until you make sort of a snail shell shape like this. And that's going to be the base of our coil pot. Um, this kind of pottery was used, remember the amphora that we talked about earlier, the ones that they put wine and olive oil in? Uh, this is how the uh, neck or the handles of those would be made, by rolling out these little squidgy, 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 squidgy. roll out these long snake-like dough. So it's nice, long, thin shape. That you put around the edge and then just nip it in place and you can see we're starting to build up the sides of the pottery which is really cool so there you go building that up nicely and you just keep going keep rolling out the snake shapes and adding them to the edge until you've built up like a bowl shape for this one um, 
and build it up until you've got the shape of the pottery that you would like. So we roll this one out, squeegee, 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 rolly, 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 squeegee, squeegee, rolly, 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 roll, nearly there, nearly there, nearly there, and same as before, just nip it all around the edges to add the next part of the pottery. There you go, and you can keep going as high as you want until you've got the shape that you're happy with. Um, I'm just going to nip a little bit of a, there you go, put a little spout on this one. So it's like um, you could pour things out of it. You could keep uh, I don't know, salt. No, you don't want to keep far too much salt. Salt in the dough, salt inside it. Ooh, horrible. But yeah, you can see, just nip it into shape. And there we have a nice shaped bowl with a little lip on it, which is fantastic. So we'll just move that off the surface and that's the first one done uh, the second way of doing things is a lot more straightforward you just take a big ball of dough roll it around and then use your thumbs to squeeze in the middle and there you go you can just shape a very rough bowl and um, this one isn't as good because you'll get very different thicknesses on the edges but it's a nice quick way if you want to just make a very simple bowl or plate or something like that so there you go make sure all of the edges are nice and flat nip it down you can see how you know you could decorate it with thumbprints like the piece of pottery we saw before let's change the edges and then the last way this is one way you might need some help from the adult that's working with you because you're going to use a rolling pin like this one and you just flatten out the dough until it's nice and thin there you go and we're going to make the sides with this so the sides will be made instead of from coils out of a single piece of dough that's been cut into a rectangle shape so get something that's got a nice uh, hard edge this could be like a ruler i'm using a special bread tool you don't have to be as fancy as that but a ruler would work and you just cut the shape of the side out of the dough collect all of the extra bits put those to one side because we're going to make the base out of those and then carefully peel this off the surface so I make sure you've got lots of flour down and then roll this one over again oh, move that out of the way I don't want to squash it again roll that one flat this is going to be the base um, oh no I'm not quite happy with that so I'll roll it back up again see it doesn't matter you can start again with this stuff Put it down flat and then roll it so that I've got a kind of a roundish shape. But don't worry, we're going to cut the edges off um, so it's the right shape. So there we go. Take it off the table, get the edges, and we use these upright and we just roll them around and we form the sides, in this case of a, a sort of a vase-like shape. And same as before, nip the sides together, just push it all in. And you can see that we've got a very rough shape starting off now. And you just push it down into the base. There you go. Nip, nip. Nip, 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 nip. That's that. So what we do now is we'll probably cut off some of the edges to make the base a little bit more round. But first, you also need to prep a baking tray. Get some baking paper that you're going to put your pottery on. So that it doesn't stick to the baking trays um, just do two of them to show you what we need so let's try and shift this one off you can see it's important to make sure you've got the flour down otherwise it gets too sticky like this one that's a little bit too stuck um, but we're going to use this to just take it up a little bit cut off some of the extra bits there we go cut that one off cut that one off do 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 do, do. cut that one off yep Get that one. Take off the corners. Do, do, do. Yeah, just reshape it a little bit. Make sure it's how you want it to look. There we go. A bit more of the corners. Come on, Paul, hurry up. It doesn't have to be perfect. There you go. Nearly there. Nearly there. Oh. How long is this taking? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good enough. Come on. Come on. It's only a practice. Come on, Paul. 
Right. I guess I'm happy with that. And then just get the edge and gently lift it back off the table. Lovely jubbly. And pop it on the baking paper. Right. Just make sure the ship's there again. Good. So this is about ready to go. Just make sure that you're happy with how it looks because then it, it will, uh, once you put it in the oven, it will go hard and it will be very, very difficult to change it. So make sure you're happy with it before you put it in. All right. So that's everything ready to go now. You can see them on the baking trays, on the baking paper, and we're now ready to use the oven. So again, make sure you've got the adult that's working with you to help you with this bit because it can get very, very hot. Um, just move those over there. There we go. Set the oven to its lowest temperature. You can see this one's on just above gas mark one. So very low. And you leave it for three hours. And when they're done, they come out looking a bit like this. And they're all ready for you to paint and decorate in the ways that we've seen before. Okay, have fun.